Hey guys, David Fine from Keys Mods. I'm here with my boy Lorenzo. Hey. How you doing? And a special guest to Keys Mods, an old friend of mine. We go way back, don't we, Robert? Oh yeah. We 20, go 20, 20 years, years. years. Yeah, probably. All right, so this is Robert Berger, and we have something very special that Robert is working on right now. Guys, we are going to look after a butterfly caterpillar that takes an entire year to go through its life cycle. This caterpillar actually buries in roots underground. And in order to find them, you actually have to dig up a plant and find it in the roots. So Robert's gonna show us how to do that. You excited? Right. Yeah, we're excited. We can show you how to do it. And only in certain species of yucca do they have to be dug up. The yucca we're using here at the house um, we have to go cut them out with the saw. Okay. They actually feed in the stems. It all, right. all depends on how stimmy the yucca is. Yes. Is how hard or how easy it is to dig them up. Guys, the yucca giant skipper is a great bug. We're going to show you all about that. Uh, stay tuned. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Right, Lorenzo? What happens when they subscribe? Um, you get um, notified when we post new videos. Yeah, you got to hit that little bell for notifications. Guys, right. super rare bug. Check this out. Okay, so Robert, we're here at your house and you've got this incredible beetle slash butterfly research uh, thing that you've got going on. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm Robert Berger. I work for the University of Florida and I specialize in breeding uh, sweet corn and field corn. And one of our efforts, things we've been working on quite a bit lately is to try to improve the insect resistance of corn uh, especially to the fall armyworm and to silk fly. So, All right, fall armyworm is a moth. Fall armyworm is a moth. Three on corn leaves. So these are fall armyworms. Yes, this is probably the, the biggest pest of corn worldwide now. It got introduced to Africa a few years ago and then now has spread all the way across to China. Wow, so that so the, they just lay their eggs on there and the larva go to town. Go to town, yep. And what we are working on is we're working on insect resistance and we've got one of these guys that these larvae don't feed on very well. Huh. And we're working to see if, you know, maybe we need to um, get that out to the industry. But uh, cool. I, one of the things I spent, I work on it in my job job. <laughs> Your is, real job. Uh, my real job is <laughs> insect resistance of corn. Look at that. All right, well, it's cool to be able to um, incorporate your, incorporate hobby, your, your, your hobby, hobby with, with your, your job. With your job. Now, now, it fall is, armyworm is a native to Florida or no? It is a, I don't know if we consider it to be a native to Florida. It is native to Central America. And I assume, we just, I think the assumption is that as they move corn, they uh, move domesticated, more. domesticated from uh, Central Mexico, uh, the fall armyworm followed the corn. Okay. And it is a very, um, very good migrator, so it'd be possible if you move corn 100 miles north out of Mexico into South Texas, it could have easily have found it. So. Wow. So Lorenzo, so normally on Keys Moths, we, moths are the heroes. Yeah. But this time it sounds like a moth might not be a hero. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, might an enemy. <laughs> might be an enemy. Yeah. All right, so now, uh, Robert, what would be the implications of the fall army worm where they are, you're saying the largest pest worldwide, that's a big claim. Yeah. Well, of corn. I'm not going to say corn. of corn. Yes. Of corn. Um, well, in places, it is causing extensive damage in Africa because the in Africa they don't have the agricultural in infrastructure we do, and most of these farmers are small acre or two farmers, subsistence farmers. And if you don't have an, uh, a way to be able to get pesticides to them or knowledge of how to use pesticides, and then have a very vicious leaf feeder get in there. Uh, you can have um, starvation conditions and rather quick condition, or right. quick, and they're Quickly. it's causing billions of dollars in losses in Africa. Right really, now. tens of billions. The research is basically trying to see what determine. It's part of my research is seeing, uh, trying to select for corn, uh, both sweet corn and field corn, that has a natural 
non-GMO resistance. Um, and we're just basically selecting plants that are more resistant. We're actually putting farming worms on plants, uh, seeing how much damage they do and picking and harvesting or selecting the plants that do the best under those types of farming worm conditions. So what we're gonna be going to dig out, guys, this is Megathymus yucca, the yucca skipper. Now, are these all Florida? These are all Florida. Okay. These are Strohecari from, from South Dakota. Right. Um, and these are they, yucca from out west. Is that these correct? Don't, I think those are Agrothymus instead of these are more that these are more the agave. These are these are Megathymus yucca, I believe. Are they? Yes, they are. They're from out west. Well, and out, out west, they are a lot smaller than the ones in Florida, guys. So these guys right here. Oops. Oh, I'm not hold my phone over the <laughs> over the specimen. Yeah. But. Okay. Oh, okay. Those came from one of my friends out there. And then yeah. these are an agathymus. That's agathymus. So these guys feed on the agave. Right. Out west. And these are the same as this one, but these are from the western United States. But down here in South Florida, guys, we have megathymus yucca. And that is the Yucca Giant Skipper. And that is what we are going to be showing today. Robert, why don't you pull one of them big females out so we can see the underside and see the difference there between, even between a male and a female. But, so that's, a, that's just a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. And they have a very, very interesting life cycle, which we are going to show you guys. And you reared these yourself, right? Yep, collected the eggs. Yep. Reared them here on the station, here at the house, on a different yucca than they normally sh use out in the wild. But we'll talk about we can talk about that. Later. All right now, do you have you have the it was a bear grass yucca? I have, yes, I Is have it, three species of yucca outside the door. I don't and you're saw, gonna, this, saw those when you walked in. You're gonna get to show us all that, right? If you want to see them, all right, and show us the difference between a male and a female. Now, I think these are the males. Those are the males. Yeah, those are a little more. Pointed in the yeah. rear end. Yep. So the so the uh, the males have more of a pointed forewing and a smaller hind wing, and then the the females have obviously that great big body where all the eggs are, and the 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 hind wing is a little bit larger, and it looks like the males don't have some of these spots right. on the inside of the hind wing. The females have those extra row of spots. And the females just have, seem, seem to be a little bit hev more heavily marked right. than the males. But um, now these guys, from my understanding, have a very interesting um, mating habit. Now, if you were going to see one of these on the wing, Robert, what time of year would you go to see uh, one of these giant skippers on the wing? Oh, in about three weeks in Central Florida. They Central be Florida. Up, yeah, they occur anywhere from Highlands County clear up through you know Tennessee. Okay. And uh, yeah, you go see them and you look for sandy areas. And three weeks. So now today is mid, it's late January. So like first week of February, is that? I would expect to, yeah. And, and a great majority of the time you never see the adults. The only reason I know they're flying is I can find their eggs. You can find eggs. Yeah, so yeah. guys, you, this is a very different butterfly than, doesn't act like normal butterflies. Normal butterflies, you know, you'll see them at flowers and you'll see them floating around during the day. Well, these guys, I don't even think they go to flowers. Do they go to, do they feed on flowers? Not to, not that I'm aware of. Never seen them at a flower. Well, but where I have seen these, when I caught these, these Terhecari, yeah, they actually folded their wings up and rested on the flower stalk of the yucca from the previous year. And that's the reason why I think they look like they do. Really? Like this, is once they fold up, they do kind of look like those old pods. Oh, they got that, 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 that kind of gray, grayish green. scaling. Yeah. And you'll sh we'll show you why, guys, that, that might be a good camouflage because uh, when they, the larvae have all this white fuzz that they, right. we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Come but, on. but so, so now my understanding is so if you're in Central Florida and you're in a place where, uh, bear grass yucca grows, and we're going to show you what that's all about. Probably in pine pinelands and oak camp. Uh, more of the sandhill habitat. Sand, sandhill habitats. Uh, they, they they hatch out. They emerge in probably late January, early February. Right. And the female, the males hatch before the females, and and they will actually somehow maybe maybe it's a pheromone situation, but 
my understanding is they they know when the females are gonna emerge and they'll be sitting there waiting for them on top of the stock, uh, waiting for them to the females to emerge. They um they may be. I have I've not heard that. I have, I have that may that maybe I've not heard that. Okay. And so then also they so they the females a lot of times before they even dry their wings after emerging, they will have already been mated with and they get on the they get to business, lay their eggs, and then they're done for the year, right? Pretty much, yeah. They're much. Done, done for a couple of weeks and they're done. Only one brood all year. Of this species, yes, only one brood, yeah. yeah. And it takes a, a year, they feed for a year in the yucca. Yep. Yeah. Feed for a whole year. A whole year. Now, guys, so this sits inside the stalk and inside of the, some of the times the roots, is that correct? And no, the bear these, grass. These got, yeah, in the bear, yeah, and they're feeding on yeah, the big root and the bear grass. In other types of yucca, that's not the case. Right. So you can well, see on some of them, uh, there's a there seems to be like a greasing on top of the of the specimen that happens because there's a high amount of uh, oils fat in the body fat in the body and, and sometimes when you have these specimens like this that will crystallize and you can see these little white crystals here starting to form and there's a way to fix that but um, but that's it's just a very different butterfly very different butterfly thank you for showing us that so now uh, as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware, there are not a whole lot of lepidopterists in South Florida, and you kind of live on the South Central Florida kind of yeah. border in a, in a sense. But um, you know, we don't talk a whole lot about collecting, you know, on our channel. But there is a there is definitely a place for the study of lepidoptera, and this is one example where Robert is is. Uh, is trying to figure this out. Yeah. So Lorenzo, now he's into beetles as well. He's got drawers and drawers of beetles. Um, what did you learn about beetles? Um, about how many beetles there are in the world? There's there's 12 times more beetles than but there is butterflies. 12 or 17? I think there's 12 times. 12 times, okay, you're right. All right, so 12 times the amount of beetles in the world than there are butterflies. Yeah. I think 25,000 to 300,000 is about the, the way the numbers work. All right, so now it, it, I'm sure there's plenty of beetle pests, is that correct? Oh, there's a lot of beetle pests. A lot of beetle pests. Mostly what I, most of the ones I study are pests because they feed on, they're wood boring beetles and they feed on trees and other types of right. plants like that. All right, well, maybe we can do some stuff on that one day. But today, we are here to talk about one of the most unique butterflies in, in Florida and probably one of the hardest butterflies to actually ever see in the wild. And so we are talking about the yucca, giant skipper, megathymus yucca. What's the subspecies name here? Well, that's under dispute. It is, it, like any, everything. <laughs> like everything, right. Well, the, there was a subspecies that was described on the coast called Bazoki or Brzuki. Something like that. Right, and its type locality is Jupiter, but I have not been able to find any of that. Okay. So if it's occurring on the coast, um, it has been extinct or, you know, it's no longer extirpated, it's no longer there. The ones we're dealing with, I think, is yucky, yucky. Yucky, yucky, okay. Um, from the, basically the central population. But this one does share characteristics of both, so there's a possibility that the previous one is uh, more of a, you know. A morph? Uh, not, I don't say a morph, I, I always like to use the word um, slightly more variant as you right. get near the edge of a range of a butterfly. Okay. And it's probably got described because of that, but the yucky yucky from South Florida tend to exhibit a lot of the characteristics of it, but not the full characteristics All right. of that subspecies. So All that's right. what makes it kind of difficult. It's kind of a blend zone. And you went up to like probably an hour or so north of here to find these eggs of the giant yes. skipper, correct? Yes, came out of uh, Highlands County. Highlands County. All right, so now you're looking for the eggs in what, January, February? February. February? They, they were probably collected in the end of February. All right. And then, so you take the eggs. Now, bear grass yucca is a little bit difficult to grow down here, right? You, or you can't dig it up because it's got this big tap root. It can be dug up. It's much easier to... Uh, grow seedlings. I've got a bunch of seedlings growing out you in do. the backyard. Look at that. And also got bare grass rocket. It seems to do better in a pot. Um, our soils, it likes an acid sand. Okay. And our soils tend to be alkaline sand. So it's the exact opposite of what it wants. Got it. So they do not grow very well in our soil. But if you put them in a pot, 
uh, like we could show you on our my doorway out here, yep. we can um, we can can control the alcohol uh, acidity control the, the acidity of the soil or make yeah. it as acidic as we want it, and that makes them grow a lot better. Now, but the the main way that we can do this in South Florida is, but not by using bear grass yucca, uh, but you're using we're using an exotic, right? The uh, yeah, we're elephant using, tipsis. Yes, elephant tipsis. Before we go dig out these things, uh, Robert, why don't you tell us what we're looking at right here? This is the what is considered a, a yucky nest, and this is yucca skipper nest. This is the plant that it's feeding on, and this is the nest or the uh, this kind of a I don't know what you want to call it. It's kind of a tower that it builds out of the plant, huh. and you can see all its poop around there. And he'll just yep. come out to the top, poop, and, and drop it, it down. down and it falls there. down there. But this is what they build at the top of these yucky. Okay. This is from uh, yucky. Alofolia, a Spanish bayonet. Spanish, oh, so that's why you clip all these needles yeah, off. Yeah, because, because that's because painful. It's very painful and very <laughs> sharp. Okay. And this is from, this was one that actually was dug up out of bear grass. Bear grass yucky. So you oh, see yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You see how the these things here, uh, they don't spike you like the uh, Spanish yeah. bayonet do. Right. And so now this, is there actually a pupa inside of here? Yeah, both of them. There's pupa inside of here. And so basically they're in this, uh, Kate here just waiting for the pupa to emerge so that right. we can check out the adults. Right. Wow. All right. So now, and these are these are both the same species of skipper, correct? Same species of skipper, and like I said, now it feeds on. Uh, you can get it to feed on three different species of right. yucky here in Florida. And how how deep does it go? It's. It, uh, it would not surprise me if we opened this up that if it's sitting in, in and if it's a pupae, it's probably sitting right in here. Okay. But like, how deep does a caterpillar go down here and bear, burrow, all the way down? Yeah, like that, no, it was it was further than this. They can be up to two feet long, two feet deep. So he'll he'll live inside of this thing, and when it gets warmer in the winter, even the pupa I think wiggles up to the top to get warm. Is that correct? Um, I've, I've heard that they use that chamber to regulate they, they, regulate. They, their, they probably do. I have not ever seen the pupae move. I've seen the pre pupae move. Okay. But I once I think once they become a pupae, they're pretty much stable or somewhat stable at the right. top because you don't want to get too far down there and try to have to emerge. Right, right. So now there's also there's another species called Megathymus kofaki, correct? Yes. Have you reared that thing? Well, I can show you the results of that out here. Okay. I, I had eggs. I got eggs of that this year. You did. Yeah. All and right. They started feeding. Uh, completely killed off. I. I I found out that um, I have not had as at that great a luck getting them to emerge out of their eggs because there's some egg parasites. Uh, so I went and with was, the kofaki, with the kofaki, and I think there's some with the yucky too. All right, but I went and stuck two on every plant I had, thinking I'll get one to live. And it looks like they both lived, and they just decimated my plant. <laughs> okay. So right. uh, there wasn't enough to feed two. And, and where would Kofaki live? Is that a little bit more northern? You can Florida? find Kofaki in Highlands County. It's rare in Highlands County, but usually you go up in the Orlando area to get Kofaki. Okay, and that's a little bit smaller. Slightly right. smaller, Slightly yeah. Smaller. All right. And that's more of a root feeder, and it doesn't produce this same kind of nest up the. It does not. They're underneath. They're, the nest comes out of the ground or out of the roots. That's more of a root feeder where this one can be more of a, a stock feeder. And, and okay, very good. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll think of more questions as we go along. Let's, let's go take a look. Yeah. Lorenzo, are you ready to dig some cocoons out of the stock of a yucca tree? Yeah. Isn't that gonna be cool? Yeah. All right, Robert, you ready? Yep. Let's go check this out as we go and see what Robert's got going on in his front yard. So we are going out in Robert's front yard and he is gonna show us. That is where you wanna probably wanna start. Yeah, that's bear grass yucky. Bear grass yucca. Um, this is, this happens to be, pull the weeds out of here. So this is an, uh, a, a bear grass yucca with an albino stripe in it. And that, right. that, they actually sell this in stores? I have seen it for sale, yes. Okay. And, and that's and the it, only one you can seem to find locally around here at any of the nurseries. And it looks like, is there something eating these or, or, or these are just kind of small plants? These are small plants. Well, that's, that used to be this tall Okay. until I stuck two kofaki larvae on it and they completely ate the plant off of the plant. Oh. They, killed, they took out the main plant. So the kofaki, the kofaki just tore up the plant. The 
tore it. Well, actually, they didn't feed on the plant. They fed on the root. On the root. Everything on the root. They eat all the root out completely, and then the plant kind of tumbled <laughs> down in the wind. Okay, so it's only one one bug per plant with these, right. with with these the, bare grass. Right. Same thing happened here. This was one plant right in here. Yeah. And I put a couple larvae in there, and now it's dead, and now it's sending it all these pups out. Got it. Got so, it. Wow. All right. So that's that's bare grass yucca. So are these? This, now that looks a little different. That is, this is a yucky, what is this, whipper eye or whatever from okay. the, the Mojave Desert of California. Oh, wow. And then that is yucky, I think it's gracilis. That's the yucky that uh, this skipper feeds on uh, further north. Further north, okay. So what they'll do is they'll come and lay an egg kind of like on one of these little leaves right here on the bottom side, right? Yep. And sometimes on the top, but sometimes on the, the bottom. Top. All right, most of the time on the bottom. So they'll lay an egg like right here on the bottom of these leaves, and it's literally one egg per plant, from my understanding. Um, and sometimes they sometimes. actually sometimes come in and find one they really like and splatter a lot of eggs there, but they uh, Only one, one one per plant is going to yeah. survive. And then what the larva does is it starts feeding on the leaf. A little bit. A little yeah. bit. And then when it's small, and then when it's big, when it gets to like the second instar, it, it'll dig down right into the heart. Let me see if I can get this. It, it'll dig down right into the heart of the stem of this plant and just burrow right in and start eating out the stem of that plant. Right. So that's that's pretty mo much what it would look like, guys. Uh, the plant, A plant this big will have a, a tap root that goes down Probably to the bottom of the pot, I would think. Yeah, at least, at least a couple feet down. So that's pretty cool. Okay, Robert, so what else we got now? So now you're not using bear grass yucca to, to actually do the work. You're using something a lot bigger. Right. A lot more meat to it, if you would. Right. This is what? Yucky Elfs and Tipsis. Elfs and Tipsis. See the... All right, so now right here, guys, this stem right here is a yucca giant skipper. Guys, we are actually going to cut this out now. How, how did you get this little stem to come out of the stalk here? What, what well, do you got to do? Just, I just cut it off. Okay. You cut it off when they start getting big like this one. All right, and then and it, that, and that, it that pushes out a shoot? That way it'll put out some shoots that are a little bit, they, they don't like these really big right. shoots. They much prefer these littler ones. Yep. Awesome. And then what you're gonna do is you're you're just gonna going to well, hold on, see, yeah. lop off. It just well see. Oh it just popped right off. Yeah, they've actually he's fed that much in he's there. He's fed in there. And ate everything on the inside of that stem. Now how do you know when they make a, a, a chrysalis? How do you know? Usually when they start getting that white. Yeah, when you see guys, when you see this white stuff. White powder, you're getting close. This and I white know just powder. by time of year if it's been doing this so much. Got it. But when you, you see the white stuff, you know that this stalk has got a pupa in it. See all the white stuff flaking out there? Do you know what that is? What is that, Robert? Do we know I what that is? Uh, some kind of waxy... Um, is it just Who knows, some, right? Yeah, some but, kind of wax, uh, just some kind of wax that they use to protect themselves. But the undersides of the wings of the skipper have a, a, a white, frosty-looking stuff, and it looks just like this, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So now, what would we do with this? Well, let's just see if we can see if he's in there. If I got to go deeper in the tree, oh, he, may, he might. He might even be yeah. deeper in that hole that it just came out of. I hope, he hope he's in this thing, right? Yeah, I hope he's in this thing. And my understanding is the pupa yeah, shell on these guys are pretty fragile. Yeah, they can be because they... Let's see if we may... <laughs> Pine needles are useful for some things. He's in there, I think. Yeah? Just a question of getting him out. Do a little surgery, huh? I didn't bring my... Almost like an exacto knife would help. My clippers would help, too. 
Is he in there? Is that him? That's him right there. That's him right there, guys. Okay, so right there is the base of the pupa, or the chrysalis, of the mega thymus yucca, the giant skipper. So no, he's still a pre-pupa. He's still pre-pupal. Okay, so this is actually still a caterpillar, correct? Yep. Wow. All right, so what? that is a pre-pupal caterpillar, and he's got all this dust on him, and yep, he's moving around there. Yep, and I think that, and my, my thoughts always were on that white dust, that that white dust is to help the big caterpillar move up and down the tube, but I'm not sure about yeah, that. So make, make sure he's, yeah, reduce his friction so he can get out, Got help it. him get out. Interesting. Okay, so now you're just gonna pop him back in. Yep. And take the stock inside. Yep. Very interesting. There's another one. Really? Yeah. Another one right in there? Yep. Yeah, all right, look at that. It's right inside of there. Oh, I see it. Oh. Another one for you to hold. <laughs> there you go. So you can just hold. He won't come out this side. But like I said, I have quite a few of them around here. How many do you have? I think there's like 11 of them. Are there really? Look at that. Let's see if I can, you know, you just gotta, I forget, you know, sometimes you put those, there's one right here. Let's see, it's, you see this one, you see where it's the poop. Oh, yeah. Frass. Oh, yeah, look at all that frass, guys. Look at all that frass. You see all the poop, Lorenzo? Yeah. So that guy's just going to town, and when he's, when he's done, when he doesn't want to poop inside his home. So he comes up to the top of the stock and um, empties it out and it's all collecting kind of on top of this little stump here. So that's pretty cool. Looks like you might have another one right there. Yeah, right? I do. There's another one there. Look at that. He's right there. He's right there. Look at that. Oh boy. Now, is that, is that pre-pupil as well or is that a chrysalis? It's, I got to take him out to see, but it's just... Oh, okay. One's a getting there. Well, he's in the. He he's, may a, be, he's a pupa. He's a pupa. He is a pupa. All right, guys. This that, that's probably a male, right? I would think so. Yeah. So that's a megathymus yucca pupa. Check it out, guys. He has made his chrysalis, and he is chilling now. He's got about what a week or two, couple weeks. I would think he'd have a couple weeks. Couple maybe. weeks like yeah. that. Look at that. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So you're dedicating portions of your property. To this project huh because yeah. like these these plants are not you know they've been here for a minute <laughs> well, actually, they were wow planted, they were planted by the, the previous owner they were i am just using them for a different purpose than he had <laughs> <laughs> there's another one. Oh wow look at that so he's just he just burrows right down is that the hole all the way down there yeah still so he's all the way down that's like, a, that's like 18 inches at least uh, and it's still going, guys. Still going. Yeah. All the way down. Look, the hole's all the way down. So they burrow all the way down. That's at least a foot and a half, or two, two, two feet down. And um, you can see the ones from previous years. Yep. Oh yeah. So he's he's been doing this a while. <laughs> so if my wife had this plant in her yard, she would say, David, this thing is dying. Why do we have this? Can we put like something, you know, with flowers or whatever? But now, and it's like, no, babe, this is uh, this is gold right here. I don't know where you are, but that's a, a valuable little bug. Very, very interesting. And we are gonna do our best, guys, to see if we can get some really good footage of some adults as well when they eventually decide to pop out of these little nests. Uh, we are gonna try and do some video on that. So stay tuned for more videos on the Yucca Skipper. All right, guys, so it was a very interesting episode. Robert has shown us the process uh, to harvest or to grow and harvest Megathymus Yucca, the Yucca Giant Skipper. Lorenzo, yep. what do you think about that process, bud? Uh, it kind of takes long. But long time. Uh, yeah. A lot of patience. Not many people are willing to do it, but if you want to get some good. It's the easiest way to get uh, a good specimens of this skipper, otherwise you don't hardly ever see them. You never see them. All right. So you be careful, don't josh that around too much because there is a live P 
pupa somewhere inside of that thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Mm -hmm. Hope you uh, liked it. Lorenzo, what should they do if they like it? Subscribe. Below if you like yeah, if, if you like some of this stuff, uh, going out and finding some of the incredible rarities and difficult things to find, uh, you know, give us a comment and see what would you like us to hunt for next in South Florida. Uh, Mr. Berenger, thank you so much for your hospitality and right. your expertise, my friend. All right, appreciate it. Thank All you right. For coming, All right, guys, enjoy South Florida. Take care. Yeah.